Hello everyone, you're watching PC Helper and welcome to another video in the Python 3.9 tutorial series. If by the end of this video you feel like you have learned something today, then please leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe to PC Helper for regular content. So in this video we'll be talking about exception handling in Python. It is a very interesting topic. So first of all, by the name only we can get that we'll be handling exceptions in this video. But first of all, we have to figure out what these exceptions actually are. So to know that, first of all, we have to learn about three different type of errors in Python. The first one is compile time error. Second one is logical error. And third one is runtime error, also known as exceptions. So first of all, let's just quickly learn what is the difference between these three different types of error. So the first one is compile time error. So this appear while the program is being compiled and this occurs before the program is being is executed. So for example, I have this program where first of all, A is a variable, B is a variable. I take input from the user, integer input, and then I print A minus B. So when I will execute this program, this program will first of all take one input, then another input, and then it will give the result. But what if instead of PRINT, if by mistake, I just give a space here. So when I will execute this program, I will get a syntax error so this is a compile time error. So when a developer makes some syntactical error or some error like this, for example, if we are starting a for loop for i in range and anything, let's say two, and a user, uh, a developer just forget to enter this colon and just go ahead and write the lines of code inside this for loop. And if the developer forgets to write this colon, then this is a syntactical error and it comes under compile time error. Now let's talk about logical error. So this second type of error is also very interesting because in this we cannot see any error but the error is in the logical part. So as you can see I wanted to make a program for adding two numbers but instead what was printing was the output of subtraction of two numbers. So when I was entering 8 and 5 so it did not give me the addition of two numbers instead it gave me subtraction of these numbers. So this is called logical error where we do not get the desired output. So in this case we don't get any error but we do not get any desired output. For example, we have an example of, we have already learned about how to find factorial of any number. So if we make a program for that, but somewhere in the program, we have made some logical mistake. So we won't get any error, but we won't get the desired output. So if I'll enter five, I won't get the factorial, factorial of five. I will get some other number. So this is a logical error where we don't get the desired output. As in this case, we wanted the addition of two numbers, but, but we, instead of adding this plus sign, we added this subtraction sign. So the desired output was not here. So this is called logical error. And finally, let's talk about runtime error. So let's say we have a program where there is no logical error as I've already fixed this logical error in this program. So it will give the addition of two numbers. There is no runtime compile time error too. There is no syntax error, but the user enters a value that is not valid for this program then that's called runtime error. So where the developer has made no mistake, he has made a good program, but this time the user makes a mistake. So let's run this program. I've run this program and let's say first I enter five, which is an integer input, but in the place for B, the user enters high, which is a string. So here we got an error called value error. So this is called runtime error because there was no mistake made by the developer, but instead there was a mistake made by the user. So this is called runtime error and these are called exceptions. So this value error, which you can see is one of the exceptions, one of the many exceptions in Python. So we'll be handling these exceptions in this video. So what we'll be doing is whenever such type of error occur, whenever user enters some invalid type of input, instead of getting these four lines of traceback error and all, we want user to see some particular text. Like in this case, we want user to see, uh, please enter a number, don't enter a string, something like that. So instead of this, we want the user to see something we have printed and not this error because it does not look nice. So let's see how to do so. So first of all, we'll be learning about two keywords that you can see on your screen right now. First one is the try keyword, which runs a particular line of code. And second one is the accept keyword, which only runs when there is any exception. So we will just copy this program of adding two numbers and put it inside try block. So we will put it inside try statement. So what Python will do is first of all, it will just try this block of code, which is written inside this try statement. And if there is an error, then it will come to this accept keyword where it will look for error. So in this case, we are expecting a value error. So we will write value error. 
and we will print please enter a number that's it so this is how pro our python program will look at it so first of all it will try to run this program but if there is any value error it will print please enter a number instead of these four lines in red which does not look nice so now let's rerun this program and here first of all we are entering 5 and again 5 we got 10 as an output which is the addition of 5 and 5 now let's again run this program here first of all enter let's say 5 now let's enter any string which is a value error but instead of getting value error we are getting a text please enter a number so this is how we can handle different type of exceptions in python but there are tons of exceptions in python so what we have to do is we have to figure out that what kind of exception can we get in a particular program because in this one we expected that we can get value error because if the user write a string instead of integer we can get value error but let's say in a program instead of addition we have division so if we will divide a and b let's run this program again if i'll enter 8 and 4 there will be 2 as an output because 8 divided by 4 gives 2 very simple but instead of 8 and 4 if i'll enter let's say 10 oh my bad 10 and 0 then we will get an exception called zero division error because any number cannot be divided by zero so this is called zero division exception so now we know how we can handle this exception too we can simply enter another line of code called except and this time we will write zero division error and now we will print uh, a number can't be divided by zero as simple as that so now when we will run this program so first of all let's enter some valid values 10 and 5 so we are getting 2 as an output so it's working fine but if we have an error we have an exception so if we are entering let's say 5 and 0 instead of getting the zero division error we are getting a text saying a number can be divided by zero so this is how we can handle different types of error in python so instead of getting error we can simply print a text which was written by us only in this case a number can be divided by zero and please enter a number or we can write any text we want but we don't want the error that's why we just enter try block and accept block but before ending this video i want to talk about another keyword which is important and its name is finally so what it will do is so first of all let's make some changes to this program what we want to do is we want to print let's say uh, program started so when the program starts we want to print program started and when the program ends we want to print program ended as simple as that so when we will run this program if we are entering valid output valid input so first of all we saw program started as an output then we will enter two numbers 5 and let's say 2 we got the answer 2.5 and the program ended but let's say we have an exception error here so if i'll enter 9 and 0 so in i got a zero division error and i got a number can be divided by zero but i did not get program ended as a text in my output so this happened because as soon as my python came on this line which is print a divided by b it got this exception which is zero division error so it came to this line of code which says except zero division error it printed this line of code and it did not print it program ended but let's say this program ended line is an essential part of a program and we want to print it no matter what happens even if there's an exception we want to print this line and if there is no exception still we want to print this line in this case finally comes handy so what it will do is if we will write finally and write a colon after it and if we'll write print program ended here so no matter what happens so even if there is an exception then also finally it would be printed at the end and if there is no exception then also finally will be printed at the end so now when i will execute this program let's say 8 and 4 there was no exception we got the output 2 program and it was printed we expected that but let's say this time we get an exception here so let's say i enter 55 and 0 so we got zero division error a number cannot be divided by zero was printed but still program ended was printed so this is how finally works so if there's any line of code which we want to be printed no matter what happens if there's any exception or if there is no exception this finally this line of code which is in, inside finally statement will be printed every time and there's one more thing that we can do 
let's say we don't know what kind of exception will occur here. So we don't know whether there will be zero division error, whether there will be value error or there will be any other kind of error. So let's just remove these lines of codes, code from here and simply just write except and just don't just don't specify any kind of error like value error or zero division error and just print enter a valid input. So the problem with this is that I don't recommend doing this because in this case you won't you won't even know that what kind of error occurred you will just know that there was any exception in this program but you won't even know which kind of exception was there so i don't recommend it but if there's any case where you don't have any idea which kind of exception can occur you can simply write accept and what will happen here is that when you will run this line of code so let's say we write 9 and then i will write some string so this was a value error but i simply got enter a valid input now again execute this program here i will write 10 and i will write 0 it was a zero division error but still the output was the same that enter a valid input so if you don't know what kind of exception you are expecting from the user you can simply write accept but if you know what kind of exceptions you can expect from the user you can simply write value error or zero division error or any the name of that exception you are expecting from the user so this is how we handle exceptions in Python using try, accept and finally. So if you have any doubt, you can go through this video again and you can write in the comment section too if you have any doubt. I will try my best to help you out. And if you like this video, then please leave a like and I will see you guys in the next one.